Hello, this is Uncle Jim. I had a wild hair to try the Foxtrot Mike's ranch rifle with a suppressor. So let's see how this goes. I'm going to check for impact. I'm going to check for brass. See if it goes 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock where you want to be. Between 3 and 4 suppress would be ideal, but it does not have a adjustable gas block. And they do have uh, springs for suppress, but this is standard stuff. No, no uh, suppressor springs. This is how it came. Uh, the Mike's 15 upper on the 870 lower ranch. So I'm kind of curious here. I sighted in the scope earlier and shot it that way and got it uh, just about right. So I want to see where the impact is. I want to see where the ejection is, and I want to see if it dings brass, because I already modified the deflector here to fix that problem. We'll see if it works suppressed with the extra pressure. So a lot going on here. I already have a shot out target, a four inch target, because I'm using a three power scope, and that's what I need to, to aim straight on instead of sideways and crosshair so that's the only target out there got the spotting scope and uh, we'll see what happens so the first shot I'm gonna do in slow-mo so I can see where the ejection is and go find it in the gravel and then I'll put the brass catcher on it later but I'll do two shots just to see if we're getting three or four o'clock otherwise it's over gassed whatever need the spring who knows now the can I'm using is an old 12 year old AAC SDN6 308 can. And I use the 308 can because uh, 223 cans are useless. Uh, 223 is loud. The only advantage you get is no one knows where you're shooting from, but it's still loud. So for me out in the mountains, it sounds like someone's shooting way out there where the sonic crack is, where a 300 blackout and a, a bold action 308 with this can, you're quiet. So anyway, let's see what happens. Let's do a slow-mo and see what kind of ejection, if I get dings, all that stuff. I'm gonna start off with uh, PMC 55 grain, and then I have a couple reloads in my pocket of 55. I'm not shooting 77, 75 grain, which would be quieter. I just want to see what plinking loads do. All right. Okay, that surprised me a little bit. No adjustable gas block. It's made to shoot both, I guess. Usually, you know, and I don't have the extra power spring for suppressed. But what I noticed was in the slow-mo, the first one went uh, three o'clock. Second one went like two and a half o'clock. That's acceptable if you're using something for both suppressed and non-suppressed. And uh, the longest piece of brass that flew in the gravel here was three yards. And that's acceptable. The second one was about two and a half yards, but it went two and a half o'clock, which isn't ideal, but still good. So I might put the extra power suppressor spring in here because I realized I like shooting it suppressed. Even though it's a 16 inch barrel and it's longer, it was really quiet with earplugs. I could hear the crack out in the mountains I'm going to take one earplug out, uh, and we're going to shoot some more just to see. But it wasn't bad. It was way better than I expected. That really surprised me. So uh, the other good thing is I already had a group out there unsuppressed. And with the heavy 308 can on there, that's all steel. That's all stainless steel. It's an old can. It only dropped uh, two inches right below the target and the windage was perfect. 
And since this little uh, three power scope has mill dots on it, I can always accommodate for that. So I'm a, I'm a lot happier than I thought I would be shooting a suppressed with the stock spring and everything. So that was pretty cool. So anyway, I'm going to finish out, uh, what, four more rounds of PMC. I haven't even tried heavier ammo. And then I got two of my reloads with 55 grain. And uh, I'll just put the brass catcher on and keep an eye on the brass. Uh, because I reload and I don't want dings in my brass. And I thought for sure, let's see if we can focus. Can we focus? I thought for sure with that extra pressure, I'd get dings in the brass, even though I modified the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? Not the ejector, the, mm, I'll put it here in the sticky. I'm an old man. Give me a break. Deflector. All right. Okay. I got the brass catcher on to save my brass, which is reloadable now. And I got four more of PMC 55. And then I'm going to shoot two of my reloads. I just want to make sure the impact is only two inches and no windage problem. So we're good to go. All right. I got one earplug out to see what it sounds like. That wasn't bad with one earplug. And it's grouping right at the bottom, two inches. All right, good. Windage is good. I mean, let me take both earplugs out just to... I'm probably yelling. Okay. Both earplugs are out just to see how nasty this is. Two, two, three, five, five, six is nasty in a semi-auto. All right, I could deal with that. That doesn't hurt my ears at all. And this is, oh, and they're grouping nice right there. This is a 308 can, bigger bore, old can. None of that fancy crap nowadays. I'm going to shoot without ears. It is, this is the way I'm going to set this up. It's not bad. You got, you know, you got a little crack. But it didn't hurt my ears at all. Let's see, last one. No, we're out. Okay, let me, uh, let's keep it rolling. Let me, uh, I'll put two, uh, two of my reloads in that shoot better than PMC right here. And these group really good, unsuppressed. I was surprised with this heavier trigger. You know, it's a stock GI trigger. Now they got a hyper fire trigger for these things, but they're kind of expensive. I, you know, I went back and forth, uh, uh, put a different hammer in, see what works. And I think I'm going to stick with it because uh, uh, from my testing before, even though this has a heavier, grittier GI trigger, I shot the same groups with a two stage trigger with the different lower. So. I'm just going to leave it. It's a ranch rifle. It doesn't have to be a bench rifle. It's going to take care of whatever you need. So, And I got a three power scope shooting at a four inch dot. So it doesn't you know, cover the crosshairs. Let's see. I got a racket, don't I? Okay, these are my reloads. I'm doing it without earplugs. And this is Varget and a 155 grain. And I have heavier. I got 77 grain, which would be quieter. Hell, I could shoot behind this rifle all day long without ears. I didn't think that would be the case. Uh, my spotting scope is all messed up. Hang on a second. I got to find where I was because I bumped it. And the groups are right down there, exactly where the last groups were without a suppressor. They're only inch and a half, two inch below 
from the weight on the barrel. I'm pretty happy with this. I want to check my reloads here real quick. They got a red stripe on them. Come on, reds. Okay, there's a red stripe. There's no dings in the brass. Hopefully you can see that. I'm a happy camper. All right, that's my uh, my little test today. And frick, I'm happy. that. I'm going to shoot this suppressed. I might get the spring to slow her down a little bit, but damn. That kind of surprised me today. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting over gas and all that. And louder. This is acceptable. You can shoot this on Sundays. And no one knows what's going on out there as far as neighbors go. Until next time, thanks for watching. America.